Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome back to another video. It is time for another thrift store makeover. I found this bunny in a teacup about two months ago in a thrift store and of course I could not leave him there. He needs a makeover. Here I have all my supplies. I'll be using Super Sculpey, Big and Bond, my sculpting tools and some tin foil. So let's get started. In these interesting times there are not many Easter activities happening, but YouTubers can bring a little bit of Easter to you, hence the bunny makeover today. And if you're not into Easter then here is still a cute bunny makeover for you. The first thing I'm doing is giving this cute little thing a color. Every time I apply clay to the sculpture I apply bake and bond first to make sure the clay sticks. Then I apply a thin strip of clay that I fold over like a collar on top of his shoulders. I press it down with a flat sculpting tool that I will be using a lot for this sculpture. I won't be using my pasta roller for this project as the sheets of clay are so small that they are easily rolled out with a small rolling pin. Next up is adding his waistcoat. I add a piece of clay to either side of his belly and press it down with my flat sculpting tool, making sure it properly sits on the sides and under his arms. I create a little opening in the middle where his waistcoat is pulling the buttons as if he has eaten too much at the Mad Hatter's tea party. Then I apply some fabric wrinkles by applying snakes of clay and smoothing them out. Thanks to Ace of Clay for this tip. Of course I cannot leave out the smallest of details and here I am adding some buttons to his waistcoat. I roll a little ball, press it down with a ball stylus and poke two holes with a pointy tool to make it look like a real little button. A hat cannot be left out when you're talking about steampunk. So with some tin foil I am covering up his ears that will become his hat. I attach the foil with bacon bond and then brush more bacon bond on the top of the hat so I can attach the clay. Now it's time to build up the hat. I started with attaching a flat sheet of clay and smoothing that out and shaping as I go. With the circle shapes I cut out the brim of the hat and attached it and shaped it so the sides stand up. I highly recommend this circle shaped cutters. They are cookie or fondant cutters and not difficult to get hold of. For some added detail I'm adding a hat band to the hat and aged it by making it look worn.
I then bulk out the top a little bit more, as it was not looking like I wanted it to. Once I was happy with it, I added cogs, gears and some other steampunky stuff to the hat. What is a bunny in a waistcoat without his pocket watch? That's what I'm making here. I made a ball, flatten it and add a trim with a snake of clay. I'll later add some detailing by adding the hands of the clock with small snakes of clay. And this is what our little bunny looks like so far. I wanted to give the impression that this bunny has eaten so much at a tea party that he has fallen asleep in a teacup. This means I had to close his eyes. I applied a small ball of clay to his eyes, flatten them out and draw a line in the middle with my detailer tool to create his eyelids. Because I covered up his tiny ears with a hat, I needed to give him new ears. I decided to go with ears that are way too large for him, but I think they look adorable. I rolled out snakes of clay, flattened them and shaped them out and attached them to the hat. I put them into the position I wanted them in and added fur detail to the back of the ears and ever so slightly to the inside of the ears. I baked the sculpture according to the package instructions and then it's onto the painting. I first covered the parts of the sculpture that were not covered in clay in a layer of clear gesso to give the paint something to hold on to. The cup I painted black and there will be a special review on the details in the end, so stay tuned for that. I paint his head black as well. I know I use a lot of black, but metal accents stand out really well against black and I think hats are mainly black or brown in steampunk anyway. Once all the black parts are done, I'm moving on to the waistcoat, which I am making blue, as well as the band on the hat. It's leaning very much to the Alice in Wonderland bunny, but I do love that story, especially Tim Burton's version of it. And I'm not talking about the looking glass, as that was a complete disaster. For the bunny I'm using a grey as a base coat and then dry brush white on top of that. This makes him a very light grey which I really like in combination with the blue waistcoat.
Finally, I'm adding watered down black acrylic paint to the parts I wanted to have more shading, like the eyes and the folds in his waistcoat. And this is how he turned out. I added gold accents with a gold paint marker to the brim of the cup, the rose details on the side, his buttons and the steampunk elements. I hope you enjoyed this project. I love how this one turned out and it must be one of my favorites so far. If you did like this video, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel out. Make sure to check out my socials and my Patreon site. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!